be the second murder trial of Robert Newlander at its unofficial halfway point. The prosecution used day eight to call two final witnesses, DNA experts, and rest its case. News Channel Line's Andrew Donovan once again joining us live outside the courthouse after what turned out, Andrew, to be a shorter day in court. Well, Christy, those two witnesses were the district attorney's 11th and 12th witnesses, his final witnesses. What they had to say was a little more technical, drier in terms of information shared, but this represents a milestone in this case. Now the prosecution can rest after presenting its full side to the jury. Those two DNA witnesses we're in Onondaga County Court today, along with the regular people of the case. Those two witnesses were repeats from the first trial and had a simple purpose to confirm for the jury all the blood in the bedroom was Leslie's. Then the prosecution played the full recorded interview the district attorney did with then Dr. Robert Newlander in 2013, more than a year after Leslie died. That was the DA's final piece of evidence. How do you think your but, side of the case went? Well, I, as you know, uh, I can't comment on that, and uh, I respect the question, but I just will let the jury decide. Doctor, any comment after the prosecution wraps up? Mr. Bach, any comment on the prosecution side? Bach will lead the defense's side, presenting its theory to the jury starting tomorrow. Exactly what witnesses will be called, we don't know yet. We don't know who they will call to testify. We can only rely on who was on the stand in the last trial seven years ago and who's on the potential list of witnesses. It does include both Newlander children, Jenna and Ari. It includes Robert's brother, Ovid. And of course, the defense will call its own hired experts. Jeff. All right, Andrew, of course, they may not call any of them at all. That's their choice. Um, so certainly, obviously, you've been there every day, day in, day out. It's very serious. But there was actually a bit of a lighter moment today, right, involving the SU game. I mean, the judge really give them a chance to, to take an extended break and watch the orange? Yeah, actually, it was the district attorney's idea. He, he's a well-known Syracuse basketball and all Syracuse sports fan. He pitched to the judge, and the judge then pitched to the jury the ability to take that longer break so they could actually sit down wherever they want to watch the game. But the jury decided that they'd rather power through the case. I was able to ask the district attorney about that after today's session. You didn't get your wish to watch the SU game? They just told me we're up by 30. Is that possible? Do you think it's possible? I <laughs> know I don't. <laughs> Somebody's lying to me. Up by 30 when we talked to the DA, but of course the team was up even more than that for the final moments of the game, which we think the district attorney was able to make time for and get to a TV after court. He got to see the last few minutes, and of course it went well for his team. Jeff. Yeah, I sure did, Andrew. Uh, Andrew's got a day eight recap for us at localsyr.com, along with his tweets in real time that were happening. Also a post new today that has bios and pictures for all 12 witnesses.